Welcome to Scotia and Gold. My name is David Parrish. I'm the CEO at Scotia and Gold. Scotia and Gold is a grower-owned cooperative that has been Scotia and Gold since 1957. Our roots go back to United Fruit Growers back to 1912. Um, we have 35 grower member families that stretch from Windsor to Annapolis, so basically covers the whole Annapolis Valley. Uh, our growers each year would pick approximately 110 million apples, and those apples are all hand-picked. So again, welcome to Scotia Gold. We're going to give you a little tour on how our growers decide whether the fruit is ready to be harvested, and then we're going to show you how they come into our facility, how they're stored, how they're sorted, and how they're finally packed. So again, welcome, and hopefully you enjoy the tour. All right, we're standing in a sweet tango block. Scotian Gold is the exclusive grower in Canada of Sweet Tango. It's a child of Honeycrisp and Zestar. It's a super crunchy variety. It has nice big cells and thin skin, which makes it really loud when you bite into it. This apple is really good in a pie or an apple crisp, but my favorite way to eat it is just like an apple. <laughs> Hi, I'm Gary Van Ostrom of Canard Orchards Limited. I uh, grow approximately uh, 100 acres of apples in the uh, Upper Canard Kings County. Uh, my favorite variety would be Sweet Tango. So this is a Delta Absorbance Meter and it was developed in Italy. And it reads the chlorophyll content of the apples. So it doesn't care what the color of the apples is because it actually is putting beams of light into the flesh of the apples and the amount of light that reflects back into the little mirror inside here. Whatever that difference is, it, it gives it a reading and you can tell the maturity of the apple. So as the apples get more mature, the number will get lower because there's less chlorophyll inside the apples. So we take readings on about 50 apples, representative down through the orchard of what would be most likely to be harvested first tell how mature the fruit is. So this is giving me a reading of 0.51. We want a reading of 0.26 before we actually harvest this variety. So they're still actually quite immature. The firmness of these apples before we do any other tests. Let's peel a little bit of the skin off. On the red side and the green side. firmness tester. So we're just wanting to know how firm the flesh is inside. You can see up on the screen the activity the computer does. See, we have an average pressure of 15.4. So we can see the, the polar reds are very clear in the center with just a little bit showing up on the outside. So I'd call that a three and a half. So it's not quite four, it's a little bit more than three. And the Jersey Max are at about a five. Welcome to our pre store. This is when we grade all of our apples based on defect, color, size, essentially quality. After the apples are dropped into the pre store, they get their initial wash and an initial QA inspection. As you can see behind me, Paula Red, one of our early varieties, its first check through the defect inspection is currently taking 64 photographs of every single apple. What it's doing is checking for any external defects. After the external defects are checked, there's an infrared system that looks for any internal browning. Go on and have a look and see how the apples are sorting out on the line.
Welcome to the CA section of our operation, or controlled atmosphere is the proper term. What these rooms do behind us is it controls three levels, oxygen levels, CO2 levels, as well as temperature. The idea of this room, which stores approximately 750 bins, is to allow us to pack and ship fresh apples well after the local season crop has already been picked up. So you've seen the apples getting stored in the CA rooms. You've also been to the pre-sword to see how the apples get separated and graded out. This is the packing room. This is where the action happens to get the apples in a box and out to the stores. What you're looking at right now is where the apples drop into the water. That's the bin dumper. From there, apples float along and get their initial wash as well as hit brushes that would knock off any um, residue left inside the bin. From here, they hit the waxer to uh, get a nice shine uh, uh, on, on the apples. And then if you can this way, hello, uh, you'll see to my right that we've got five baggers on the right side, which can be converted into trays as needed. And on the left here, you can take a look and see that we've got two tray lines. The beautiful thing about this particular line is that it is uh, quite modern and it is high speed and it's also fully automated. What this line allows us to do is actually increase our capacity by about 200% versus our previous line, which really allows us to respond and react quickly to customer demand. Uh, if you take a look further down, um, this line is fully equipped with a automatic uh, taper, uh, automatic box making machines, as well as an automatic palletizer. So highly efficient, bringing Scotian Gold into the into the modern era. And so joining me down in the uh, the final stages of the, the packing line here. So right in front of us, uh, as I mentioned, is our is our high speed automatic box making machine. It just fires boxes out all day long. Uh, and then just to the left of that, you can see there's an, an automatic arm that drops a pad just to protect the fruit in transit uh, at the very top of the box. Just to the left of that is where we've got the, the automatic box closing and taper. And then this little machine here with the little red light on, on top of it is where the uh, sticker goes on the box that just describes the pack date and the variety that is inside the box. So we kind of come this way a little bit. I was mentioning about our automatic palletizer. So as you can see, beautiful sweet tangos ready to go to the stores. Uh, these ones in particular are on their way to Costco's. And so it's got automatic arms that gets palletized by a row. The pallets are then built. And there's what I like to call a bit of a train. So the train picks up the pallet once it's filled. And it comes over here to the part where you see it just sitting right now. And that's where it gets automatic corner boards and automatic strapping to secure it during transit. And that's the last stage. It gets scanned into inventory, it gets a little sticker, and it heads over to shipping and on the way to the stores.